Well, you know, I always thought, you know, I'd, I'd love to work in the film industry and that would be really exciting. Uh, but never, th you know, had no contacts, no friends, no, no way of, you know, getting into it. So I, I always imagined it was going to be, it's not going to happen, you know, that it was just like a, a dream, but, you know, I'll give it a go anyway. So I made tons of little films. My friends, my grandmother had a camera I could borrow, VHSC, uh, and we shot films together, little action films and uh, bits and pieces. And then down the line, I um, tried to get into film school. Uh, because this is what I really want to try out. But there's, there's a short course you can do in Denmark, which also is, uh, it's, uh, you can apply uh, all, all over the world. Half, half, it's half Danes and then half international. And it's called European Film College. And it's brilliant. You know, it's an eight-month course and you have, uh, you have cameras, you have studios, you have everything for eight months and you live there. Uh, so I, I got into that. Uh, there's 100 students a year. And you suddenly, I suddenly found out that uh, I wasn't... Uh, you know, you know, I always thought that if I ever got into the film industry, that I'd, I'd be really bad at it. You know, that I wasn't, you know, that everybody knew more than me. And then trying out that course, I suddenly realized that, no, you know, I actually know as much as the rest of these guys, you know, so, so why can't I pursue this further? And so I did the eight months and, and then thought I'll, I'll give this a go, I'll carry on, and then, you know, really try hard for film school. So I got in and I, I tried to just get a job in film production as a runner, as, you know, different, different types of jobs as you can get, and, and ended, ended up doing uh, lighting. Uh, so a spark, you know, setting up the lamps, that kind of stuff. And, uh, and then moved my way up to Gaffer, but always with the aim uh, of, of to become a, a, a cinematographer myself. Uh, and so and during that process, I then ended up shooting lots of short films, no budget, no budget short films. And then that gave me the chance to get into film school. You have to be very adaptable when you um, when you work in TV drama. I think every drama always, always will very often require its own style, its own pace. Uh, uh, so I, I always and I always try to find that. You know, sometimes it depends what kind of program you work in, and also sometimes you, uh, sometimes you're setting it up, and then you're allowed to sort of set the style, set set the mood, set the tempo. Uh, but other times you are maybe doing a second block or a second series of, of uh, an existing show. And then I think it's very important to be able to be a chameleon and be able to sort of fit into someone else's, you know, show and, 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 and do, you know, the lighting in a way that, that you like, of course, but, but also so that, that fits the show and, and complements what they've been doing so far, you know. Well, I think my, as a director of photography, I think the key relationship is with the, the director. Uh, that, that's the person you talk with the most, you know, you sort of, during the production, with the, the shooting of it, you sort of become the team, you're, you're the guys, you know, along with the first AD, you are the team that sort of has to make it happen, you know, and you sort of, you pull the threads and, and, make, and, 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 and set the tempo of the, of the shoot, you know, making sure that, you know, you're getting through the setups at the right time. So, but, you know, obviously you have to have relationships with, with everybody on the crew, you know, you need to talk to, you know, costume and makeup, you know, you need to talk to the production design, make sure that, you know, the things are, are, are ready in, in a way that, you know, works for the, for the show. Inspira uh, I, I have a big soft spot for uh, Roger Deakins. You know, I think he's an amazing uh, photographer, uh, amazing cameraman. Uh, uh, I'm a huge fan of Rob Richardson's, uh, especially his earlier work. And, uh, and also Emmanuel Lubisky, uh, Chivo, as I'm told he's known. Uh, again, I think, I think those three are the people that I sort of admire the most. Like I said earlier, if you are uh, setting up a new show, then you have to completely immerse yourself. You have to sort of work out what are the references, what are we dealing with here, you know, and how can we make this the best show it can be, you know, and what, what is, you know, can we make this unique in any way, you know, how, how are we going to make this special? You know, where if you, again, if you're feeding into a, uh, a, an established show, you know, then it's about, you know, watching the previous series and, 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 and catching up with that and, and, and sort of, yeah, uh, making sure that you are, you know, you, you, you're doing something that, that fits in. Uh, I, think, I think you have to stay on top of it, absolutely. You have to know about new developments, new bits of kit that comes out, you know, uh, and, and sort of be open to experiment, you know, and, and try out new things. You know, I'm a big fan of LED lighting, you know, the, all that kind of uh, modern multicolor stuff, you know, which is really handy and really practical. With cameras, you know, they're all so good now, you know, so I'm sort of... I don't really mind, you know, and also that sometimes you don't have a choice, you know, for instance, on the production I'm nominated for, uh, uh, Black Mirror is, is made with Netflix, and Netflix has, uh, only approves cameras that can shoot in 4K, 
which means that I can't use an Alexa, which would be my preferred camera. Uh, so I had to use a red camera instead. Uh, but you know, the results are fantastic. You know, the, the, cra the quality of the cameras are so good now. So, so, so for, first of all, they're so user friendly. So you can sort of pretty much work it out. How, you know, if you know have your basic knowledge about cameras, you can work it out as you go along. But, but also, there's usually an assistant on, on set who who knows how to press all the right buttons. You know, so as long as I know how to light and how to you know uh, run the set and run the crew, then then you know it, it's going to be fine. You know, uh, I think. Uh, what would I like to have known? Uh, I, I think I would have liked to have known that, you know, that, that you are good enough. You are good enough, you know, before, you know, when, when you think that, that it's, it's so hard and everybody knows so much more and it's so difficult, you know, it, it, it's, it, it, all, it all makes sense, you know, it, you, can, you, you can do it, you can definitely do it, you know. As a young guy, it would have been nice to know that, it, that, it's, that it's totally possible. Absolutely, I think, well, absolutely. The main, I think the main thing, when you start working in the industry, I think the main thing that is important is your connections, it's, 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 it's the people you know more than what you know, you know, it, it, that, ha that it is unfortunately still true. Uh, but if you come in with, you know, if you can show that you have good knowledge and you are good at communicating and, and you can, you, you, yeah, uh, I think, I think every, everything, uh, everything's possible, you know, if you have, if you have enough belief, yeah. Uh, the production for USS Callister uh, was, uh, we shot for four weeks and we prepped four weeks before that, but obviously the production design, you know, uh, started way before that, the spaceship took probably two and a half months to be build. Uh, so yeah, so four weeks in, uh, in December where, where we sort of uh, prepped it and we went to, you know, there wasn't, there wasn't many, that many recce's because it was a set. Uh, we, did, we did find an office and we found a flat and we found a, a, a deserted planet, uh, which was uh, Lanzarote. So prep mainly consisted of, you know, doing lots of storyboards and, and working out uh, the visual approach to, to the film. So we had uh, probably seven people in the camera department, three in the grip department, and then I think there was six in the lighting department. For Yusuf Callister, it was very much Star Trek, uh, but it was all the different iterations of Star Trek, you know, so it was classic Star Trek, it was the, uh, uh, you know, the classic series, uh, then it was the films, you know, the classic films with, with Shatner, uh, and it was the, and then of course the, the new J.J. Uh, Abrams versions of uh, Star Trek as well. Uh, and, and, but, that, but that was sort of, it was sort of in the script already, it was sort of, you know, implied that this was the kind of thing that we were dealing with. Yeah, so, so that, that was our main inspirations. But, but funnily enough, you know, we, we sort of struggled when we, when we started out trying to uh, put it together. We had an op the opening scene, which ended up being four by three and very sort of classic Star Trek. Uh, we weren't sure how to do it because also we were sort of, we were worried it was gonna, you know, be too boring and, and too, you know, we should have this exciting. We were thinking we were gonna shoot it with steady cams, we we're gonna run around and flares and all, all sorts of crazy stuff. And, and we sort of ended up sort of just landing on, no, no, I think, I think it's cheesy. It has to be cheesy, you know, and then let's just go all the way. Let's just, you know, with, with love, make it like, you know, uh, the first couple of series of, of Star Trek. I think I really, I, I sort of enjoyed uh, the spaceship in the offline mode. I sort of enjoy it when uh, Nanette arrives at the spaceship for the first time, not sure what's going on, and it's this alien place, and uh, she sort of walks around in these, you know, deserted corridors and, and trying to puzzle out what this is. Uh, and I thought that sequence worked very well. You know, it, we, you know, we planned it well, and and I think, yeah, I think it, uh, yeah, turned out really well too. I think well, I, 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 there's a, the, the, there was a boring production side of it, which was not having enough time. So that was a major challenge, uh, trying to fit this 90-page uh, script into 20 days. You know, I guess for TV production, it is, you know, it's, it's supposed to be generous. But it was still, it was a tight, tight job to, to, to do it. So I guess that, that's one challenge. But the, the other sort of major challenge we, we had was uh, lighting the spaceship. Again, on a, you know, generous budget for Netflix, but even uh, a generous budget doesn't cover, you know, uh, whatever it was, 
uh, 300 light sources and uh, you know every, every single panel had to light up you know basically the you know the art department cut a lot of holes in the set and said this is this is where the lights go and uh, you take over now Stefan uh, so me and the gaffer Mel we've sort of had to come up with a, some clever plans to to make that happen uh, within our budget limitations Black Mirror has a you know an extremely sort of uh, high legacy. You know they made some amazing shows, and uh, you know I, I, I watched some before I, before we started shooting. I'd watched all episodes, but you know some of them before I got the job. When I got the job, I thought I'm going to watch the rest now. I'm going to catch up. I sort of almost got embarrassed, you know, because we have there was so the quality of the previous episodes was so high. You know it was so amazing, and I I think the main thing. Uh, my my thoughts of making this was just don't screw it up, you know, just you know, just try to make it as good as as the other guys, you know, because you can't you can't be the dot one. This was my first time uh, working with anamorphic lenses, and I think that was a great joy to try out, you know. Uh, uh, they, you know, th those type of lenses are, are trickier to work with, but their their results are spectacular. So I think that was something that I brought straight onto my next job, which uh, I also shot uh, anamorphic. The main uh, difference I between anamorphic and a spherical lens is that anamorphic sort of uh, squeezes the image into uh, uh, you have a four by three chip and you get a wide image and it's sort of the anamorphic lens squeezes it together. But because it has to have this extra sort of glass element, it means that your close focus is much further away. So you have to use diopters much more to sort of get the focus closer. Uh, the T-stop is a lot higher, so you can't, you can't, uh, you need much, a lot more light uh, when you work on those lenses. Uh, and then there's other, but, but what you get with it is you get some of these sort of classic, beautiful artifacts that you've seen from all your, uh, favorite 70s movies, you know, uh, that look fantastic. At some point, I'd, 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 I'd like to work on a, a large, you know, a large film scale production, you know, that, that, that I think that is the dream. I don't think there's a particular job or genre. I've, I've done so many now, you know, I've, I've done fantasy, comedy, you know, I've, I've sort of covered it. I think what, what's most important to me is just that it, that is variety, that the, the next job is something new and something fresh and something I haven't done before.